and we finished the Israeli attacks. A total of five attacks. Uh, I think they did, they suppressed two. A total of three of the missile sites. Uh, two here and one up here. Uh, and they lost four uh, diplomacy points. And so, I don't know. It's it's always pretty rough as the Israelis to attack. Um, I say as the Israelis, but as the player in this game, it's always tough to attack. So now we're going to do the missile launches. I do them one set at a time and resolve the whole thing. Um, technically, there's probably enough missile markers over here to do all of them. Um, but... Yeah, there probably is, but I find it easier just to do one at a time. Um, it just lets me process a little bit easier. Um, the long-range missiles and the mid-range missiles, what you do is you, <clears throat> you roll two dice, a d6 and a d10. Uh, if the d6 is even, it's a one uh, or it's a ten, and if it's an odd, it's a zero. So this is 10 plus 9 is 19. So it would go in the 19 space, which is in the in the ocean. So that one has no effect. Uh, we'll do the same for these grad missiles. That's going to be 9. And it goes in the white space since it has a white box on it. And that is 5, 6, 7. Right there. So it's on an iron dome. This Iron Dome can choose to uh, attack it. It attacks it successfully on a 0 or a 1, and it's depleted on a 9. We'll give it a shot. Uh, nothing happens, and that one's spent for right now. I, I think, I think it, well, I guess maybe not. Anyway, we'll go to the next missile. It's going to be 18. Also in the water, nothing happens. And this is three. And three is right here. We'll roll and see if that one lets on an iron dome. They can attack on top of or uh, adjacent to. That, that's a miss. So now for these um, Kassam missiles, if it's odd from this site, if it's odd, it'll go here. If it's even, it goes here. Uh, each site has three. What I do is I just roll 3d6s, uh, two evens and an odd. Do that and we'll roll the next one. Uh, two odds and an even. So that's part one of the missile phase and now they attack. Uh, they attack successfully on uh, a zero. On a one they attack successfully but take diplomatic damage. On a two, they, um, if it's a red, red dot city, uh, they get, they get a victory point and the Israeli marker moves that way. Um, I guess lessening it. Uh, if it's, so the rules say all non-red dot city areas I don't know if that's all city areas that aren't red, or if that's every city, or every space that's not a red dot. Um, I think my first game I played that it's, uh, it would only affect, so basically if, <laughs> if it's not one of these spaces, you roll a d6, if it's even, um, the Israeli marker moves. Uh, if it's odd, they get a victory point. I think my first game I played, that only happened in city spaces. Um, but I don't think that's the intent of the rules. I think it's, if it's red, it's both. If it's any other, um, it's odd or even. The, the wording in the rules is a little bit vague there. Um, so I, I think the intent is that every other space if you roll a two, you have to roll another die. Uh, 
three or greater, nothing happens. And this is on a D10. So I just, um, I just go this way. We'll roll three times for here. Nine, nothing happens. Oh, yeah, nothing happens. Six, nothing happens. And one. Okay, so one of these was successful. So what that does is it gives them a victory point, uh, but it also moves their diplomatic marker. One space clockwise, yep. So that way. We'll do it again here. Three, five, and nine. So nothing happens with those. Uh, the grad missiles here are resolved the same way. They get a plus one, however, because they're on an undepleted iron dome. Uh, that's going to be two. So that's not a red city. Uh, and it's odd. So Hamas gets one victory point. Take that marker off and one more for here. Same thing. And that's a five. So we're good there. So that's one, that's the AM impulse. So now we do it again. Um, the Israelis go first. Oh, you know what? Sorry, that's one missile site. So you can see Hamas got two victory points, depleted. Uh, the Israelis have won a diplomatic point and themselves have won with one missile site. You can see it's really tough for the Israelis to do a terrible lot um, either way. They, they're very limited in what they can do um, politically and operationally. They're going to end up killing civilians, which is bad. Um, and they don't really have a great shot of, of destroying anything. So I'm going to finish this... this uh, Hamas impulse and, and we'll come back and take a look at it um, it looks like we'll make it uh, we'll come back I'll play the night turn and, and probably come back it, I, I, I haven't made it to past turn two um, so we'll probably be pretty close to the end at that point we can talk a little bit about the game all right all the attacks have taken place and we can see that the Hamas is at 12 victory points. Israelis at one. Uh, they're at three on the diplomacy track. Israel is at five. Um, and that's one impulse. 16 missile sites get to attack. Um, and they get to attack each, each impulse. Uh, the Israelis are limited to the number of uh, attacks they start with for the entire turn. Now, unless, unless I'm playing the missile sites wrong, which I don't think I am. Now, after this turn, all of these would go away. We would draw a, a d10 roll, there it is, plus that number, but the same for the Israelis. It would be that number of missile sites. Um, the Israelis get that many r points, I guess. Uh, the F-15s, F-16s are two, drones are a half. Or no, F-15s, F-16s are one, sorry. The drones are half, uh, Iron Domes are two. You wanna be in? No? You making it interesting? <laughs> get out of here. Um, Don't be boring. <laughs> um, so they're going to be stuck even even in future turns. Even though these go away, they'll still have, you know, odds are eight, um, somewhere around there. The Israelis aren't going to have that much. Um, So, so we're going to leave it there for this video because um, I, I almost think it's better to not attack with these guys, but then we're playing for a stalemate. Uh, the way the victory 
conditions work. It's a major victory, minor victory, major victory, minor victory, uh, stalemate. But then to win, uh, the Hamas player has to have the most victory points in here. And then both markers need to meet in here. Or the Israelis need to have more victory points. And and in here, any other thing is, is a diplomatic stalemate. Um, I've had two diplomatic stalemates. Um, they end of, um, yeah, I think they ended in here, maybe one right here. The Hamas player, or the, the, the game is going to have more victory points by far. Um, they got 12 victory points in one impulse. The Israelis, yeah, they didn't use all their attacks yet. But they need to wipe out the missile sites to get a victory point. Um, and that's it. I mean, they need to roll a zero or a one or really a two if they're attacking one of these. So that's a 30% chance of getting a point um, along with a 70 percent chance of doing damage up here. Now, this I don't think this game is meant to be balanced. This isn't this isn't in any way a knock against the game. I think this game um, and I think a lot of Paul's games are saying something. Um, and there are there are, are alternate setups. Um, they don't I don't I don't know how much of an effect they would have. Like one of them is called "Give Peace a Chance." So the Israelis usually start here. They could bump up here um, and and lose some of their military assets, but that's only one point. Um, I like the gesture, and I think I think that's. I would rather do that. I don't I don't want the military points um, because politically speaking, they're very detrimental. So, so getting back to what I was saying, I, th I think this is more of an idea game, um, but n not not preaching, but kind of illustrating a point, um, and I enjoy it. And I, it's not it's not as puzzly um, as as some solitaire games tend to be, um, but it does make you think. How can I go about? defending my land and not letting Hamas get victory points without killing a bunch of civilians and incurring uh, international wrath. Um, ba balance wise, I don't know if the game is terribly balanced. Um, I, you, you can tell it's been play tested, um, but the I, I don't feel like I can get past turn two in the game. Maybe that's the point. Um, maybe I'm doing something wrong. If I am, please let me know. Um, hopefully Paul will watch this. I mean, it's obviously been play tested. It's, it flows very nicely. Um, the, I, there's random events in here that I would like to get to. Um, the few times that I've done it, nothing really exciting has happened. Um, but I'm not getting to many, many random events. Maybe 16 missile sites is too much. Um, it's too tempting to come in with a big military force, uh, and they're they're just brutal um, against it. Um, the game the game is punishing, but not in a way that's. I mean, it's 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 engaging how punishing it is. I think it's it m makes you think about it and and the. I guess the politics of the conflict and and the interplay that's going on here, um, and honestly, it's I think twelve dollars is what I paid for it. Uh, beautiful art, beautiful system, uh, you know. Overall, very well put together package uh, from a designer who I think is is trying stuff and and trying to say things and not just putting out you know the same old thing. Uh, so I think that's it for this one. Um, I think next up for the High Flying Dice games for me is going to be St. George's Valor, which is a solitaire game also. Um, I also have Till Darkness Falls, 
uh, which is a game in Vietnam, which I love Vietnam. Um, that seems like it plays uh, pretty well solo. It's a it's a card flip that kind of seems like it should draw. And then City of Confusion, which is about the city of Wei. Um, I did another video series about uh, Week in Hell, which is about uh, Wei. Anyway, uh, that was A Rain of Missiles uh, by Paul Robaugh uh, and High Flying Dice Games. Thanks.